This is part two of a nine boat raid to Mile Lakes, three hours north of Sydney. And more viewers' boats from around the world. Why in our group some decided to buy or build and what it cost them. And that boat that's for sale, I'll give you the details later. bumpy night. Um, a bit like being in a washing machine, I'd imagine. Um, even though we're in this, this little covey bit with uh, the trees and reeds trying to protect us from the winds, um, we just bounced around and we're still bouncing around all night long. But it didn't rain, so that's the main thing. Yes, a very bumpy night. But at least we've got wind. The wind was meant to drop down completely today. I think it's only about six o'clock. It's very early. But don't be put off by this bumpy start because today we have one of the best sails ever. Morning, Rick. Did you actually sleep? Yes. Did you? Yes. Oh my god, I did. I think I've been awake all the bloody night. Morning, Trev. Morning, Paul. How are you going? Good. Now, you're going to tell me you probably slept really well last night. I slept like a baby. Oh. <laughs> no doubt about it. I'm not sure I slept at all. How rough was it? Oh, very bumpy. Yeah, right. It's foam down here all over the Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Really, really bumpy. Oh, it was beautiful up here. Nice new tent, nice new sleeping <laughs> bag. Yeah. Beautiful. Tell me, uh, why did you build a boat? Well, to be honest, like people have asked me, why didn't I buy one, uh, a second-hand one? I didn't know anything about boats. For me, it was a woodworking project. couldn't even sail, so I built the boat for a project, uh, nothing to do with wanting to be a sailor, that came second. So the cost of building a boat, Trove? Uh, it depends, a little one like mine, which is a Tammy Nori, cost me around $12,000. Right. Um, and that includes a trailer and maybe a little bit extra, I got a little outboard on the end, which might have been another 1500 or something like that, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. cheap, but it's for the love that you don't really do it for the money. It's, you get a new boat at the end of it, I suppose. If you were to buy a boat like that new, you'd probably be looking at twenty, thirty thousand dollars. I don't know. So yeah, 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 it's probably half the price of buying one new. Yeah, you've got to put in like five or six hundred hours. Of effort as well. Absolutely, because it's the labour's the hard part. That's what people don't realise when they when they buy a boat second hand. And you don't factor in the mistakes either, so you end up <laughs> end up buying. <laughs> So it's about nine o'clock in the morning. We're heading off towards Moraini, which is down the top end of the lake. The wind's dropped a little bit, but it's clear blue skies, so that's good. Uh, Chris has got to go back to Sydney today, so he'll come halfway and then uh, sail back to Violet Hill. Anyway, it should be a good sail. <laughs>
take your win. What a glorious day. The wind's just perfect. We're all in the water and we're all heading north. Beautiful, fantastic sailing, absolutely. Not too strong, blue skies, constant breeze. What's not to like? It's beautiful. Perfect wind. Chris is heading back. He's got to get back tonight. He's got to tack all the way back. So, uh, probably good to leave now. This is absolutely wonderful, this weather. Blimey. Compared to the thunderstorms we had yesterday. Absolutely glorious. It makes up for the bumpy night, doesn't it? It sure does. Fantastic. It's great to see you all the boats with a group. Yeah. So now, hopefully, you've got a bit of a taste for dinghy cruising, and you're saying to yourself, I'd like to have a go at that. Well, do you buy secondhand or build? There are lots of dinghies for sale on Gumtree in Australia and Craigslist in the States. Some are very cheap, but it's true to say you always get what you pay for. So beware that sometimes you can be buying other people's problems that they just haven't fixed. Or they've cut corners while building as the cost blew out. You can pick up a second-hand dinghy for as little as $200, or sometimes even free, but check out the sales and trailer. A new set of sales can be anywhere from $1,000 up, and a new trailer will be $2,000 or more when registered. Thanks for coming, Finn. Are you more likely to sail alone? If that's the case, then I would suggest a 15-foot dinghy or bigger will give one person enough room to sleep and store gear for two or three days, and also easy enough to launch by yourself, which is really important. If you're planning on taking a family, then small trailer sailors like the Hartley 16s or 18s or Creel 18s would be ideal. They can start anywhere in Australia from $2,000 up to $10. The breeze is coming up a bit. Yeah. Then you can move up to the Sonatas and Fars. More room and cost. There are a lot of other fiberglass trailer solo designs, too many to list, and many have well-established reputations. It really comes down to your budget and how much time you can spend on repairs. In our sailing group, there are quite a few people who wanted to build a boat, and that meant timber. There are lots of small dinghy designs from all around the world, perfect for dinghy cruising. But you must have the commitment, because it's more than likely to take you a couple of years. We're having a lunch stop. To build yourself a marine ply lap straight cruising dinghy, I think would start from around 8,000 Australian dollars up to 16,000. To have it built for you, you could be looking up to 50,000. And a fiberglass trailer seller could be as much as 70,000. So we were camped here at Shelley, yeah. and today we've sailed all the way up to yeah. here, up to Narani. Yeah. Yeah. Or to there, yeah. Well, 
Well, I can't believe the difference between today and yesterday. Yesterday we had thunderstorms, rain, squalls. Today, clear blue skies, a good gentle breeze. Probably somewhere between eight to 10 knots, I suppose, this afternoon. Fantastic sailing, brilliant day sail. There's not many clouds, so there might be a really good sunset tonight as well. Thank you to all those people that keep sending me photos of their boats. It's really interesting to see how other people go dinghy cruising around the world. Time to see some more. So we're back at Shelley Beach, just setting up around the campfire to cook. It's about 5.30, I think, something like that. The sun's beginning to set. Completely different from last night. No wind, no rain. It's beautiful. It's about 10 degrees warmer. Now this is uh, Lens Trangia with the butane gas conversion, because they normally run off meds. And, uh, Len, what delectable delights are you cooking tonight? We've got chicken and corn soup. Oh. So it should go well, down well. Unfortunately, I've got no peas to put in it because we know <laughs> that peas make the meal. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's a comedian, this one. Excellent. <laughs> Hang on. We've, we've just discovered Trevor's got some peas. Thanks, Trev. Yeah. Does that make you a happier man? Oh, much better. See, that's that's a proper meal now. <laughs> you can just... It's got all the colours. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys with... Um, what were those signets, eh? And one went away with a bloody dodgy bearing in his wheel by the sound. Too. Did he? I wonder what happened to him. What, the bloke from Canberra? Yeah, yeah. wrong with the trailer, wasn't there? Cause yeah, we no. Well, good morning. Had a really good night's sleep, uh, which is not surprising because the previous night I don't think I slept at all. It is so still and peaceful this morning. What a difference the day makes. I don't think there's going to be much wind till 11 or 12 o'clock, so um, anyway, it's beautiful. <laughs> Trev, what are you making this morning? I'm making ham and eggs, allegedly. It doesn't look like ham. 
I am going to cut that. That's a very square looking ham. Yeah, it is a bit. Ah! So, Josh, have you got any yes, Paul. tips? I do. Uh, in your cooking bag or your, your galley box, you keep your toothbrush and toothpaste and your head torch. Because those, those things always correspond. You always need them at the same time. Very good idea. Save you time There's and rummaging. Waterproof bags, lots of waterproof bags and colour coded. So I've got yellow for clothes, green is for hardware like ropes and things, and black is food and cooking. Very and it good. Makes it real easy when you want to grab something out of the boat. What was your first dinghy? Uh, the first dinghy was the, the Heron um, that I bought a couple of years ago. I, I hadn't been in dinghies since childhood kind of thing. So it was about getting back into the, the pastime and uh, yeah. And how much did it set you back? It was $500, but it, it wasn't great at floating. <laughs> so I had to do a performance enhancement and flip it over and glass the hull. Oh, wow. And, and, and it was great. So it was probably a thousand bucks by the time I'd done all of that. Right. For a really seaworthy boat. And they're all 40 to 50 years old, really. Yeah, that's much. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, there are new timber ones, but you know, yeah. rarely. Yeah. And what made you upgrade to the Navigator? Um, I was sick of being at last. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone's in 15 to 18 footers. You're all way quicker than, than 11 foot 6 Heron. So um, that and it was quite quite cramped. I still enjoy taking it out for the yeah. trip, yeah. the Heron. But uh, for, for stuff like this, yeah. where you want to be a little bit comfortable, you want to keep up with the fleet. Yeah. You, yeah, the 14 to, to 16 foot. Uh, boats are fantastic. And well, it's a navigator. Come on. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> what wouldn't you like? Why wouldn't you like that? It's fantastic. What are you having for breakfast there, Len? Oh, this is just for coffee. All right. And um, my traditional breakfast is usually. Morning, Dave. Hello, Paul. Did you have a good night's sleep? Yes. Yes. A uh, bit of view. It was beautiful. Uh, I got woken up by the birds. Rick, have you got any tips about getting a dinghy to start dinghy cruising? Yeah, buy someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> this is by far the cheapest fun known to men. Yeah, yeah, and no, always great. But if you look at the boats that we've got around us today, um, you know, a few, a few of them are home built. Others are ones that we, people have picked up for really wonderful prices that are yeah. beautiful boats. Yeah, yeah, you just got to look and be patient, really, haven't That's you? All you've got to do. Yeah. 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 So you're heading back, Len? Yes, yes, work tomorrow. And we've had a lovely, lovely raid. Thanks for coming. It's fantastic. Looking forward to the next one. If um, next time you just organise a little bit more wind for the last day, that would be... <laughs> well, we cancelled the rain. <laughs> <laughs> the breakfast of champions. Hey, Trev? Gourmet breakfast, Paul. Can't wait to eat it. Be beautiful. Rick, thank you. So, Rick, you had a bit of problem with your, your um, changer you going out, didn't you, or something? Well, no, no, it didn't go out. Just, uh, we, we had a very sloppy night uh, sleep um, uh, night, night before this one, and uh, uh, I just thought it was the fact that it was the boat was slopping around while I was trying to use my metho trangier. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, of course, what's... Uh, well, of course, it took me a lot while to work out. I've got a tiny pinhole in the bottom of my kettle Water drips, drips into the metho, and over time it gets weaker and weaker. <laughs> the flame gets smaller and smaller. And it took me until this morning, and I suddenly realised there's something wrong here. And I worked out that the metho wasn't going down, but, but my, my, my kettle was. So I, I, this is my second cup of coffee, and it's taken me an hour to <laughs> So all good fun. Learning experience. Hey, boy. See you, Lane. Scrambled egg and baked beans again. Yes, but this time I didn't cook it all in one pot. Mm. Look, we have wind. I think it's about 10 o'clock now. And all of a sudden there's a couple of knots.
steering. <laughs> I can see what you had for breakfast as well. <laughs> Just out of the Narrows at Barlet Hill, and it's always a bit dodgy here, heading back towards Johnson's Beach. Uh, wind's probably one knot, maybe two knots, if that. Um, but yeah, been a good day so far. We managed to stay together, coming all the way to Violet Hill. Oh, will he make the marker? Oh! <laughs> Nicely done, sir. Didn't touch it. Didn't touch it. You're not disqualified then. So we've just dropped Trevor back off at uh, Violet Hill because he's going back today. It's probably still only two or three knots, but uh, at least we're moving. Uh, it's probably an hour till we get back uh, to Johnson's and it's about three o'clock. So uh, yeah, it's a gentle sail. It's got a bit cloudy. You see that sea eagle up there? So we've sailed since about nine o'clock this morning, so it's been great. Yeah, the sun's come out. Well, we've got the coffee on. Um, it's a pretty good night, quite quiet here last night. No rain, the wind has come up a bit. Uh, it's meant to be thunderstorms later on today now, but uh, we might get a sail in this morning. So we're just having coffee and breakfast and Josh is drying out his phone because he dropped it in the water. But we think it's okay because it's a waterproof phone. So, he's hoping. But you can dry them out while making coffee. <laughs> Multitasking. You can steam it dry. You can, you can. I think, <laughs> yes. Yes. No, it's still working, but it won't let me charge it. It says water detected. Oh. Gotta dry it out first. Morning, neighbour. Morning, you snoring bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was me, actually. Yeah, I think it was you, but I probably snored as well. <laughs> See you, Dave. See you, mate. Uh, there's not a lot of wind. It was meant to come up at 10 o'clock. It's about 9.30, I think. So we, we sit here in anticipation of the wind coming. Tell me about your uh, your discovery of your navigator. How did you find it? Oh, we uh, we were on a raid at the Sand Islands and uh, I'm sitting around the fire and I just happened to pull the phone out, check Gumtree, and this boat had come up for sale that day. And I thought about it overnight. The next day I gave the guy a ring. <laughs> he was up in Queensland, a thousand kilometers away. And he had two other buyers, they fell through and I was the third, and I couldn't give him my money fast enough. And how much did you pay for it? $3,000. Which, which for a navigator is an absolute bargain. Yeah. Uh, well, I've only ever seen one other for sale. Quite common in Europe, but uh, you don't see many in Australia. So we're back on dry land. We have successfully retrieved the boats, and the wind hasn't really come up, so I think we made the right decision to actually pull the pin. It's only about 11 o'clock in the morning, I think three-hour trip back to Sydney, something like that. So did you have a good time, Rick? I had a fantastic time, mate. Yeah. Really, really uh, spot on. It's it's good for the soul to get away, isn't oh, it? Yeah, yeah. I'll sleep like a baby in, in my own bed tonight, but uh, it, it's been a beautiful experience. We had good, some pretty good weather too. Yeah, yeah, good good company and good weather. Yeah. Good, uh, so, and, and a couple of bloody wonderful sails. Yeah. Looking forward to the next one. Absolutely. It was a fantastic four days. It was uh, wonderful to get out for that long. Yeah. A couple of great days of sailing there in the middle. That was fantastic. And and a thunderstorm. <laughs> yes, yes, we had one thunderstorm just to dampen our spirits on the first night. Yeah. And keep us awake all night. But uh, since then it was been yeah. it's been really good. It's been really good. Yeah. I'm glad we could all make it. Yeah. It's a good turnout. Pack up time. Thanks for watching Sailing Kate Louise, and I'll see you somewhere on the water next time. Oh, and if you wondered how my Stornoway 18 model turned out, here she is, Mini-Me. 
And if you're interested in this 2005 Stornoway 18 day sailor with a canvas cuddy, with two sets of sails, a two horsepower Honda and a great trailer, contact Tim at this email address.